You know, as all this continues to unfold, we know a lot of you have a lot of questions. Our political editor, Dennis Welch, joins us live in the newsroom. Debbie Lesko joins us right now over the telephone, and uh, I want to welcome you here on Arizona's family, uh, uh, Congresswoman. And I want to start uh, my first question with you is just kind of take us through your experience today. Uh, what did you see? And at any time, did you feel that uh, your safety was in jeopardy? Well, thank you, Dennis, for having me. And yes, I absolutely felt my safety was in jeopardy, and I've been uh, concerned about this actually for several days now. I thought the tension was building, and I could tell from the people uh, calling my office a lot of misinformation out there. People thought that, you know, some momentous uh, decision to keep Trump in was going to happen today, and um, I was trying to educate people on what actually was happening. And I actually talked to conference yesterday and said, you know, we, we need a plan uh, for our safety. And, of course, the Capitol Police had a plan, but, boy, they sure didn't expect what happened today because security was totally breached. All right. Now, since you were expecting this, you said for several days and you could feel the tension building. Did yep. you uh, reach out to President Trump to try to calm this down, to try to quell some of the unrest that was out there? And do you think that he is culpable for what happened here today? I personally did not reach out to President Trump. I know that others uh, have. Um, and I, I am not going to cast blame on anyone. I think this has all been brewing uh, for a while now. And a lot of, I, I blame a lot of it on misinformation that is being spread spread all over the place on social media. And so that's why I have been trying so hard to educate uh, my constituents on how the process actually works. And so I sent out a mass email yesterday to 250,000 of my constituents saying what they could expect today, how the process worked. I put it all over social media. I sent out text. I did everything that I could. I went on media when they asked me to, to explain the process and to lower expectations. There was, again, a lot of misinformation from really good people and people that some of them I've known for years that really believed something different was going to happen today. Well, speaking of misinformation, I mean, this is a president who is still claiming that he won in a landslide. In fact, just 25, 30 minutes ago, he tweeted out um, such. Now, you've been a big supporter of the president every step of the way. Is it time for him to move on and accept the results of this election and quell this unrest? Well, I certainly wish that he toned down the rhetoric, um, you know, because that that is just not helpful at all. Um, and we, we saw that um, previously, too, not, not just from him, but from others. I mean, it's very partisan. Everything that's been going on ever since impeachment, everything's going on, but this has been boiling now for uh, several years. And, and, and it is obviously, you can see, it is just blown up here. And I was concerned about it, so I actually brought um, a, a blanket and a pillow and an extra change of clothes in today because I, was, I thought this, this type of thing would happen. I did not know they were going to breach the U.S. Capitol, but I thought I might have to hunker down here for a while because there would be people outside. You said tone down the rhetoric. You'd like to see the president tone down to that type of rhetoric. Sounds like you, you, you think that maybe he still won this election. There's been no evidence to suggest any sort of widespread voter fraud like he has been suggesting and that your colleagues, Republican colleagues, uh, many of them in the House have, have, have supported. Um, where do you stand on this? Do you think this, you know, do you, do you back what the president is saying on this? Um, you know, some of these comments that really have led to today's events. Well, what I've done and what I've said is that I was going to listen to the debates on the objections to the electors on the floor today and then make my decision. And that is the, you know, the way that we should do this in a civil manner. There was passionate debate on the floor today on both sides of the issue, and I was listening intently. I've been reading all kinds of constitutional things, listening to constitutional attorneys. And so that is the process I was going for. As, as you know, I have have not been out there, um, you know, talking about uh, fraud and that type of thing. I'm trying to be very rational, um, and and that's what I plan to do. Well, speaking of rational, I mean, there's been no evidence. Do you see any evidence out there of, of widespread voter fraud? 
Well, I'm not the one that can determine if there's widespread voter fraud. As you know, it's gone through uh, different courts. But then again, some of the courts haven't uh, allowed for evidence to be heard. Uh, so um, my fellow representatives, Andy Biggs and Paul Gosart, have been leading the charge and looking that all up. And I uh, did not, you know, I just decided to wait to hear the debate and read all the evidence, and then I'll decide. And uh, I also want to ask you, too, again, I'd mentioned that the, the president was tweeting just 20, 25 minutes ago. He's still not re he's still refusing to accept the election results. We know that frustration over those results have led to today's uh, events. Now, if you were able to talk to him right now, what you, would you uh, be recommending that he do? Would you recommend that he continue to tweet out like he is tweeting right now? Um, if I was able to speak to President Trump, uh, I would ask him to go on TV again and just ask people to calm down and to be peaceful. Um, and he, d he did say that he understands their pain, so I think that's a good thing to say. Uh, and he did say that they should go home. I think he needs to repeat that message. Well, he also said that, he, I, I believe he told the people that were there that he loved them, um, but however, he took a very different attitude to protesters over the summer uh, here in the country. I mean, don't you, do you take any issue with that? He seems to be still backing the people who took, you know, who, who, who broke into the Capitol. Well, I'm not the president of the United States, and you've known me for many years. I've known speak, you, and I'm, I, I'm trying speak, to understand why you're still like, why you support the president. <laughs> I I speak differently. I don't say some of the things that the president does. I do support a lot. Did support and do support a lot of his policies that he's brought forth. But I certainly disagree with him on some of his rhetoric. All right. Well, thank you very much. That's Congresswoman Debbie Lesko joining us here today. Thank you very much, and I'll send it to you guys back in the studio.